But previously, we talked about how to convert a location or a point from Cartesian to cylindrical or spherical. Now, what I want to do here to wrap up is now we are not talking about a point anymore, but instead we are trying to convert a vector from Cartesian to cylindrical and spherical. And that is a little bit trickier because unlike a, a point, so you, your location is all fine and good. You can go from one place to another, but the problem with changing a vector is that in the case of your x, y, z vector, your x unit vector is always going to point in this direction. Your y unit vector is always going to point in this direction. And your z unit vector is always going to point in this direction. But unfortunately, in the case of cylindrical or spherical, uh, your, let's just do uh, spherical since that, uh, since that it has both angles in question. But your theta is it starts out, if you're, if you're up on the z-axis, your theta is actually, say, um, in, in this case, depending on how you draw it, let's, let's just say it depends on what your phi is, but let's just say your phi is 0. Um, if you're all the way up here, and your, your theta is going to be pointing in the positive x direction, right? But as theta increases, your theta unit vector could be pointing like slightly downwards. If theta is equal to 90 degrees, then it's pointing all the way downwards in the negative z direction. So your theta, your theta unit vector direction, when viewed in Cartesian coordinates, actually changes as theta changes. Similarly, phi presents a similar challenge, where if your phi unit vector is pointed in this direction, from a xyz perspective, the phi direction also changes depending on the angle of phi, right? If phi was zero, if phi was zero and your point was over here, then the phi direction would just be in the positive y direction, right? But if phi was sitting over here on the y-axis, if your phi was pi half, then your phi unit vector would just be on the xy plane pointing in the negative x direction. Right? So as phi rotates counterclockwise, the direction that the phi unit vector points also depends on the value of phi. Therefore, when you're converting a vector, you're going to have some expressions. And the actual vector that it translates into in x and y and z, or in theta and phi, they actually depend on what the values of theta and phi are. And so the process of, co of converting a coordinate from Cartesian to something else is a little bit trickier, uh, but I'll break, break it down into a four-step process here. So the first step, let's just say you have your vector starts out. Let's just write this out. Let's start with cylindrical in this case. So A is going to be equal to some kind of component in the x direction, some kind of component in the y direction, plus some kind of z component in the z direction. Uh, if you want to convert it to cylindrical or, or spherical, the first step is to write it out in terms of uh, a projection onto the individual basis vectors. So remember, when if you wanted to, let's just stick with the Cartesian example, if this is x and y, the way that you find the x and y coordinates is you take your vector and then you project it you take the dot product with the x unit vector, that gives you your ax, right? And then, so a dot x hat is going to give you your ax, and then a dot y hat, if you project it onto that, that's going to give you your ay, right? So we're going to do the same thing here. So what you want to do is you want to start by taking this vector and projecting it onto the individual basis vectors. So you start with. So you start with your a and you write it out. In the case of cylindrical coordinates, you take the dot product with rho hat, and that gives you your rho component. Plus, you take the dot product with phi, and that gives you your phi component. And then you take the dot product with z hat, and that gives you your z component. Now, remember, in this case, if you're going from Cartesian to uh, cylindrical, uh, if you take this dot product, you'll just be left with az, right? So at least from a sanity check perspective, that part works out. And then if you're, or if you're doing spherical, you would do a dot r, and that gives you your r component, plus a dot theta, 
and that gives you your theta component plus a dot phi, and that gives you your phi component. Now when you do this, since there are three terms here, you're gonna have to distribute the row in, you're gonna have to distribute the phi in, distribute the z in, same for the spherical. If all of these are non-zero, then unfortunately you have three terms here, and then you're going to have nine terms over here. Hopefully some of these end up being zero, right? Now, so basically you're gonna get a mess. So the second step is to embrace the mess and expand the expression. And you're going to have a bunch of dot unit vector dot products. Like when you distribute this out, you're going to have x dot row, x dot phi, x dot z, y dot row, y dot phi, y dot z, or if spherical, x dot r, x dot theta. All that's there. Don't worry about it for now. Just embrace the mess. Expand the expression. Write out all the terms. Eventually, you're going to do a bunch of conversion on a table. But before you do that, the key piece of information you also need to know is uh, remember that one of the the key problem we're trying to solve is that these the theta vector and the phi vector change depending on what the value of theta and phi are. So the next step is to find the theta or and the phi. Uh, this is if if you're doing spherical, this is uh, cylindrical or spherical. In either case, you'll need to find the phi for the location of a. Okay, so you just do your coordinate transformation formula, find out what theta and phi are. And then step four is you, um, in this case, I think the easiest thing to do is to just look up uh, the dot products based on your values. And so here I'm just going to write out a bunch of equations and then I will, 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 uh, talk through uh, one example just to show you what, where the logic of this comes from. I'll start out. Uh, I will, through the magic of video editing, I'm just going to instantaneously make the cylindrical formula appear. And there you have it. Through the magic of the pause button, you have a table for all of the possible dot product combinations over here. So let's just start by uh, looking at some obvious ones. So if you're looking at rho and x and y, you can see that you're going to have your cosine phi, sine phi relationship, and z dot rho is always going to be zero, right? They're always perpendicular. Similarly, uh, x and y are always perpendicular to z, so any projection with z is going to be zero, and z dot z is going to be one. Now the phi projection is going to be a little bit trickier, um, so let's take a let's take a look at that in particular. So I will we're going to look at just the x y plane to simplify things, and we're just going to look at the first quadrant. Okay, so this is looking down from the top. So big I over here looking down, you can see something like this. So your phi your phi vector, say for the, this is your point here with your row your phi vector is going to be in this direction. So to actually see what that is, let's just also draw a right-hand triangle like this, okay? Now if you think about it and do some geometry, or I like to just increase, rotate this, increase phi and see which angle gets larger and which angle gets smaller, but you're gonna find that this angle is going to be equal to phi. So if we treat this as the hypotenuse, you can see that the x direction, if we break this down into two vectors, it's going to be equal. The cosine is going to be this one. The sine is going to be this one. And the cosine is going to be in that direction. So now you can see that the cosine of phi is going to give you the y direction. And the sine of phi is going to give you the negative x direction. And therefore, that's why there's a negative sign here. So if you draw it out and think really hard through it, you can work out what each of these are. But again, uh, it's hopefully you stay in situations where you can always just reference this table and go with it. I would think through a couple of them as an exercise to make sure you understand what's going on, but then just uh, stick with the table lookup method to accomplish step four. So again, uh, let's just, I will use the 
magic of video editing and the pause button to write out the spherical dot product formula. So there you go. You have all of the combinations between the dot products of x, y, z with r, theta, and phi. And um, again, I think that you can probably logic your way through this, but it just makes sense to just go ahead and use this once you feel like you have a semi-grasp of what's going on. For the purposes of this discussion, let's just choose one that uh, might be kind of gnarly to think through. So let's just do a, a theta combination since that one looks a bit hairy. So if you start with your z, x, y, so x, y, z, let's just start by thinking about our theta vector, which kind of goes down this way. If we Again, break it down into a part that goes this way and a component that goes this way. Uh, you see where the where the minus sine theta comes from. But as you as you run this, so one of the things that I, I like to do to figure out what angles what is you just think about like as theta increases, which angle also increases in this triangle. So using that logic, you can see that this one's theta. And so sine theta gives you this direction. So you see that z dot theta is going to be minus sine theta, right? That gives you, this gives you the negative z direction. So you multiply it by negative sine to give you the positive z direction. And similarly, the cosine of theta gives you the portion that's projected onto the xy plane. And then to find the portion that corresponds to x, you would take the cosine of phi. Similarly, uh, you take the sine of theta, you take the cosine of theta to project onto the xy plane and take the sine of phi in order to find the y component. So following a similar logic, you can work your way through all of these other combinations. I think this is probably the hardest one to visualize. But again, when you're actually executing, the key thing is uh, multiplying it through, distributing out the dot products, finding your theta and phi, because as you can see, uh, all of these things on the right hand side of all these equal signs you see are thetas and phi's. So once you substitute in the dot products with these expressions of thetas and phi's, you then have to plug in the values that you found in step three, and then that will give you your final expression. So in summary, when you're converting from Cartesian to cylindrical spherical, make sure that you know whether you're converting a point or a vector. If it's a point, then go to what we were talking about in the other video and use those simpler formulas. When it's a vector, Roll your eyes, take a deep breath, and start going through this four-step process where you project it onto the individual basis vectors, be it uh, rho, phi, z, if it's cylindrical, or r, theta, phi, if it's spherical, and then expand the expression. So you're going to have a bunch of dot products. You're going to have x dot rho, x dot phi, x dot z, so y dot rho, y dot phi, y dot z, which you'll later substitute those unit vector dot products with these quantities. And then Final, and then before you do that substitution, you can also find out what the value of theta and phi are, uh, just using what you talked about in the previous video of doing the point transformation, you find out what the corresponding theta and phi are. I like to find that before I do the substitution because if you know what they are, you can kind of look ahead and know which ones give you zero quantities, zero quantity, which will make the math a little bit simpler. And then you substitute in all of these dot products into here so that you have these expressions that are the original ax, ay, az with thetas and phi's in them. Plug in the thetas and phi's, and then uh, hopefully you end up with a reasonably similar uh, output, that a reasonably simple output that isn't too hard to, to write out and isn't too ugly. But again, I think that in my experience, the key challenge is first of all, identifying that you're transforming a vector instead of a point. A lot of times uh, you, you're asked to do a transformation and you, have, and you don't look at the context. You think that it's just an expression for a location when it's in fact a vector and you use the wrong procedure. But once you've identified that it is a vector, again, just go through these four processes and it's just a matter of careful bookkeeping to do that transformation.